Good morning. Nibby Mox, a.k.a. Larry Rickard here. Uh, one of my subscribers asked me if I would do a quick video on how to load a canoe on the car solo. So I thought I'd go a little bit beyond that and not just uh, talk about soloing, but also just car topping in general. So without it further ado, um, that's what I'm going to do here. So let's talk about some of the preliminary steps here before we go any further. Um, okay, one of the things, eventually, I'll talk about a lot more about this a little bit later, but very important thing is that you have bow and stern tie downs. Now, if your vehicle doesn't have uh, very good points to uh, hook into, one way that you can do the tie downs, especially in the front, is to install a couple of straps. You just take a uh, length of webbing regular webbing, uh, maybe 8 to 12 inches long, depending on what your needs are. And then you can, uh, you can double it over, punch a hole through, and then use one of your uh, nuts from the uh, car to actually hold that in. Put one on each side. Okay, and then, and with the, then with the hood just ajar, and this is a lot easier with two hands than one, you can uh, pull those straps out. Like that. Lock the hood down again. And then you've got these nice little hook, uh, loops that you can, can uh, tie into later on in the process here. Another important piece of equipment is that you have some good uh, belly straps. You can use rope for this, but uh, using the nylon webbing is preferable. If you, uh, of course, with the nylon webbing, you will have some kind of a buckle system that'll help to uh, cinch down the canoe, keep it tight. If you use rope, you're going to have to know your knots. If you don't know knots, go this way. If you know your knots, it's still probably better to go this way. I mean, I know knots, but uh, I feel a lot more secure having this on than having a uh, than having rope and knots that can fail even if you know them. So uh, before I put the canoe on top, now if you have a low uh, low vehicle, you can probably get by with putting the canoe on top, throwing the the strap over the top, looping around and throwing it back. With a higher vehicle like this, that doesn't work so well. It also doesn't work if you're putting two canoes on top, which is what I'm doing today, going to be doing today. So anyway, uh, so what I do beforehand, before I get the canoe out, is I'll take the strap. like so, and loop it over the crossbar, and one little trick that I learned recently is that you go ahead and get the the end started here. That'll help you keep the strap straight later on when you get to the next step. Okay. 
and you just drape it over like that do the same thing at the back of the car and then with that and we'll, we'll show what happens from there once I get the canoe on top but uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on the back this one thing I didn't talk about yet is uh, the, the racks themselves um, this what I'm using on these and this is a Yakima rack system. Thule is another, T-H-U-L-E, is another uh, popular rack maker. They have these uh, stand, uh, what do they call them, the towers that will fit various different vehicles. They tell you exactly how to install them to be safe. And... Uh, they really work out slick. You'll notice too that I got these uh, canoe, oh, what do they call them? Canoe clamps as well as the, uh, as the racks themselves. Very important. Um, I had a car previous to that that the bars uh, fit on the car a lot further apart. And I didn't find that these things were quite as necessary then as they are with this uh, with this setup because the bars are so close together. This just helps to stabilize the canoe so much better than uh, just putting the uh, canoe on bare racks. So uh, it also helps to protect, and if you've got uh, wood gunnels like I do, it helps to protect them a little bit better too. Okay, after you've got the car all set up, you take the canoe and you carry it as if you're portaging. You kind of get lined up so that you're remembering that the portaging yoke is about the center of the canoe, center weight of the canoe. So you get, kind of get lined up on your, uh, yeah, on your rack, your crossbars. And then you just put one gunnel up on top. Lift it up over the brackets. And then you just kind of walk it over to the uh, to uh, yeah the. Uh, the inside brackets. Now in this case, I was carrying a much uh, narrower canoe on here last time. So you, as you can see, the brackets aren't, aren't uh, fitting, but you can always move the brackets around accordingly. All right, now that we got the canoe up there, now we take these belly straps And this is why I don't like really to tie these up right away. You lift them up over the canoe like so. And it's important when you're doing the belly straps to remember you got to have them down snug but especially with a Kevlar canoe or similar you don't want them super tight or you'll start cracking the hull and then I just tie off the excess to keep it from flapping in the wind whatever way Whatever method seems to work the best. And 
then you do the same thing with the back belly straps. In this case, you actually might be able to get them over the canoe when they're attached together. Okay. Um, again, snug, but not too, you know, you don't want to crank down on them too, bad, too much. In fact, one thing you got to watch out for, there are some that have a cam that you actually pull down and those are notorious for breaking canoes because they kind of lead to uh, putting them on too tight. Okay, so that's our canoe on top of the car, but we are not done yet. Because now we're back to the bow and stern ropes. Now, especially when you got those brackets, the belly straps and that hold this can hold the canoe very, very, very steady. Not a lot of flop, not a lot of, uh, and so a lot of people anyway are tempted to just leave it at that and not put the bow and, and uh, stern ropes on. But 99% of the time, well, maybe not that much, 90% of the time, let's say, you can probably get away with just having the belly straps. And for short distances, I and when I'm not doing high, highway speeds, I uh, often just go with the belly straps myself. But what the bow and stern ropes do, they do two things. First of all, if you get in an accident where you're hitting the front end or you stop suddenly, those belly ropes might let loose and your canoe now becomes a deadly projectile. Uh, or sometimes those straps can, uh, can deteriorate and can break. In which case, again, if that's all you're relying on, your canoe is going to go flying off the back of the car and again become a, a deadly projectile. So the bow and the stern uh, ties, lines, are extra insurance that if anything goes wrong, your canoe's not going to go flying or at least if it does go flying, it's going to be slowed down a little bit by your, your bow and your stern lines. Uh, the most important being the bow lines, because if you're going forward, you know, either your canoe is going to fly off backwards, in which case the bow lines are going to keep it on your car, or if you get in an accident and the, car, and the canoe slides forward, again, it's the bow lines that are going to be doing most of your stopping for you pulling that bow down so it doesn't go. But the stern lines are somewhat important too, especially in the latter case where you're where you're slowing down suddenly, those stern lines will help to keep the canoe from, from flying forward. Uh, one thing about the belly straps, if you're using the nylon webbing, make sure you inspect it every once in a while. Also recommended that every two or three years, maybe four years, depending on how often you use your canoe, that you just replace them. Sunlight, of course, deteriorates everything, rots out everything eventually. And uh, you're relying on that canoe staying on the car. Some of these canoes cost a lot of money. You don't want to just lose them uh, just because a silly strap broke. Uh, and like I said, they can become deadly projectiles if you're going down the expressway at uh, you know, 70 miles an hour and suddenly one of those straps lets loose, uh, you know, that can be pretty dangerous to have a canoe flying around on its own out there. So every once in a while, you know, at least inspect your, uh, your webbing, make sure that it's not deteriorating. You know, especially look at those points where it's going in through those, uh, those buckles, because that's a wear spot. And so, 
and then also make sure that you're using bow and stern ropes especially when you're doing highway speeds now in my case what I do is I use paracord I loop it through those uh, loops that I showed you earlier I tie a taut line hitch in it I like using paracord because it's so thin that you hardly even notice it while you're driving down the road. If a guy's going to trust their lives, their life, jumping out of a perfectly good airplane using this cord, then I feel pretty good about it. Uh, so I'm going to put the stern rope on here in a minute, but I'm not going to show that to you. Like I said, uh, I don't have a good place that I can do this type of thing on the on the rear. So what I do is I, I've got some big S hooks that I found a place in the frame that I can hook the S hooks into and I tie the, the stern lines to that. So hopefully that helped. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, keep in mind when you're putting a canoe on the top, be very careful with how you're doing it. Make sure that it's done right, done well, and that the canoe's going to stay down up there because going down the expressway at 70 miles an hour, if you don't do things right, this can become a deadly projectile. Maybe all you'll lose out of it is a boat, but somebody else could very likely or very easily lose their life. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.